number one independent band. And he just got off at the at the Canadian border and just made a beeline. He just ditched the band on the middle of their tour. And Ricky and I were in the back of our friend's pickup truck going down Haight Street, and we seen Graham Bonner. We just seen Swerve Driver. We see Graham, the, their drummer, walking down the street. We're like, no way, he's supposed to be on tour. What the fuck is he doing here? Stop this truck. We hopped out, and we're just like, dude, we're in this fucking recording studio right now making a record. Do you want to come be on this album? So I bought him this like Led Zeppelin drum set. But then the whole time he fought me, he was like, when I was recording Wisdom, he's like, this type of music is dead as a doornail in England. Shoegaze is over, all this shit. And I was like, you don't know what you're fucking talking about, first of all. You know, because you guys don't even know how to fucking do this shit. Which they didn't, see? Until Oasis came out, all that stuff was just flashing in the pan after My Bloody Valentine. So those guys just had this, like, weird concept. And I'm like, dude, this isn't even fucking shoegaze music. This is like fucking some kind of guitar thing, you know? This isn't even just specifically shoegaze. You know, this is just... But it just had... Because it had that... Which that beat was used, you know, the... You know, the Amen break and all that shit that became every single sample in the world? I mean, that beat was fucking... It's not just shoegaze. It's every single hip-hop sample ever slowed down in, into drum and bass. It's like everything. So... But, um... So he was just fighting, and he was like... He was telling Matt Hollywood and Travis Thoilkel when we were recording that stuff, he's like... I can't believe you're letting this guy just boss you around and stop you from having fun. You guys are like 18 years old or 19, you know. Why are you with this dick who's just telling you guys to get your shit together? So those guys just bailed on me and started started a band called The Sand Pit People. And Greg Shaw, Greg Shaw was like, well, why don't you just take one of Anton's mini band names? Because I was putting out demos to all the major labels. I would just make something up. I would just go into my house and write like 17 songs and then just like make a demo and then send it to like Warner and I would call it like fucking whatever I could think of just every day I would just send them shit you know from a P.O. box just to see like what their what was up their fucking ass because I could write better than anything they were putting out so I'd just make a wild shit you know just like that sounded cool so they wanted to call their band Sand People right and I had I had a record I was making called Imaginary Friends and Greg's like Dude, why don't you just fucking rip off one of Anton's band names that he's not really using? He just pretends to use, like Imaginary Friends or something. They stole it. So then Creation, Joe Foster tried to bring us to the UK and flew flew um, flew Travis and Rick over there, and they never even went to the Creation offices. They're like, we're not getting Anton a fucking record deal. But they did bump into Joe Joe Foster, who was doing Too Pure. You know, he was in the Faith Healers, and they go check out this fucking thing Anton's doing called Imaginary Friends and Joe called his record Imaginary Imaginary Friend those guys just ripped me off and then those guys just scored a bunch of acid and hopped on an airplane and commuted for like to, to like um, Greece and sold it all you know it just fucked around they never went to creation it's just like the story of my life with Greg Shaw so then Greg felt bad because they just Matt Hollywood and, and, and Graham and Travis made this record and stole my band name so Greg gave me all the publishing so I just made all the money from those guys like rebelling against me I was just like okay well I own the record so have fun so then um, I don't know somebody should email Brent right now and tell him to come over here and hang out well Greg Shaw was also a dick a lot of people don't know but we got we got asked to play the main stage at Leeds and Reading Festival five years in a row and Greg never even told me he just ignored the emails. So then those guys got all pissed at me. Mean Fiddler got all so pissed at me, basically, because they're like, who is this fucking dickhead that won't even like accept like one of the main slots at our festival? He won't even answer our fucking emails. So Greg was an asshole, too. Because, Greg, see, Greg Shaw's whole thing was he wanted to, he wanted us to be like this secret thing that nobody ever knew that never went anywhere but that was better than everyone. So he just figured I would like make... 10 records in a row with no contract and he would rip me off you know and I'd be dead as a junkie or something but it turns out he, he fucking died <laughs> and those guys those guys did rip me off but I left them they're such dickheads I, I basically co-owned that, that company I can take them down anytime I want I have so much dirt, dirty little dope on those guys I hate those fucking alive but I mean they brought you the black keys and all this other shit right in the black lips, you know, like Greg, Greg asked me who I wanted to sign 
who who would I put on a record? And I was like, well, these guys just opened up for us in in Atlanta. They're called Black uh, Black Lips. Let's put out these guys' record right now. But you know, it wasn't like a thing where I wanted to attach my name to it. Here's the coolest thing: I was backstage at at a Psych Fest, and the, one of those guys came up to me, the main guy, and he just goes, "Anton, man, I never I never thanked thanked you, but." You know, I, I owe you all the shit because you, you you did that for us. I was like, man, that's so cool that you finally said that. So, yeah, I thought that was really cool. So the other thing that was really funny about Psych Fest is I was sitting I was sitting in the backstage area and I was thinking to myself, I'm like, because I never talked to the Wooden Ships, you know, and they're like, oh, this is this hot shit popular band, you know, they're on TV, they're from San Francisco, Mojo loves them, and I was like, thinking to myself, I'm like. I should just go down and, and hunt those guys down right now and just scare the shit out of them. Just go, you know, like I should just fucking totally tear into those guys like a psycho. So I, 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 I walked up to the main fucking dude that's older than me, man, with this big gray beard, the wizard dude that's in Moon Duo. And I walk up to him right as they're getting off stage and I start poking him in the chest. Like, I'm like, listen here, you motherfucker. You'd be working at fucking 7-Eleven right now. You wouldn't be playing these shows if it wasn't for me, man. I broke down every fucking door. Nobody even... You couldn't even play psychedelic music in America before me, you fucking dick wad. No clubs... They would only let fucking Psycho Funkopus and all these goddamn awful Pearl Jam bands play in San Francisco. We had to rent out fucking Masonic temples and fight with the police and all the people who wanted to kick, kick our ass because we were different, calling us the monkeys and shit. You're a fucking monkey. You know what the difference between me and you is? Is fucking chicks will let you babysit their children. <laughs> like, I just fucking raising hell on the guy. And he was just like, like this, with his beard, like, like that. And then I was like, for about five minutes straight, just spitting right in his face. And then I just said, I'm only kidding. I don't give a shit. If you're on Conan O'Brien or not, I don't care. But yeah, so that was pretty funny. Because I couldn't resist. I was just like, you dickheads, you don't even ever mention us. And there's no way you'd play at any fucking club anywhere on the planet if it wasn't for our band. Which is true. Because you could talk about Spaceman... For- Three influencing people, but they never made it to America. Greg Sean Mortgage's house and almost lost that thing. They were over. <laughs> so, you know, you know when when so uh, you know so I knew about Space and Three because Greg was the one that signed them and you know, all that shit. So I was following all that stuff when it went down, you know, and and became friends with Sonic and all those guys. Except Jason was always standoffish, like very quiet. But I was like mates with all those guys from square one. And then um um the funny thing about it is it's like. You know when 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 you could first get their record when when that when the Flame with Fire came out it was basically when you could actually pick up a copy of that stuff outside of the UK, right? So I had I I was with some girl in San Francisco and I put this thing on and she, or no I went to this girl's house and she put it on and she's like Anton, I don't know if you're into this shit but check it out. There's this great band from the '60s. Nobody even knows who they are. They're called Spaceman Three. And I was like, you fucking dipshit. It's like, can't you read? It says 1989 right on the fucking record. So that that was pretty funny. But yeah, it was so crazy back then in those days. It's annoyingly crazy. Maybe I'll smoke one more cigarette before we get to music. Maybe, uh, is this okay? We're just having a... Well, yeah. Well, no. Okay, it was a reissue, but also... It's not really a technically a reissue when you're when you're an English band and you're trying to get re- released in the United States. It's not called a reissue. It's called a release. So that was like their real. Fire Records only had the UK rights. So, Greg Shaw picked that up. Monk picked that up, and then they, they broke up. They had a blowout. So, there's that. I'm just going to smoke this cigarette. It's awful nice of them to put this fucking cast iron pipe. Look at this fucking thing. Oh my god, you could crank somebody with this thing. Right outside the door in case I need it. Somebody pulled up with a U-ball. Uh, U-ball. U-ball. But it's okay. Being out here, smoking some cigarettes, chilling, taking it all in. So yeah, you heard it. The sound The sound guy, he said that we could... We could uh, stream this so Katie's at this great bookstore it's called Powell's book books and in America 
Portland's like the number one city, believe it or not, for people reading books. Like the percentage of the adult population that actually buys and reads books. This fucking bookstore is like a New York City block long and deep. It is so massive. It's big as a Walmart or something of just books, but just aisles and cool. Well, Mike, you should you should you should stream all the sh- the shit and download it. You know? Because I'm busy. You you don't even have a fucking clue how much stuff I do. You know what I mean? Like, I've got the third sound recording in my studio, and I, I have to oversee that from overseas. <laughs> you know? Making sure records get out there. I, have to, I, did, I did 15 interviews yesterday. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. You know? And, pl- you know, and traveled. And I got to feed my wife. Uh, remember to take a shower, all that good shit. Let's check out this. Look at that little shack in this backyard. That's kind of cool. I don't know if you can see it back there. That is really cool. Some somebody's shed. This like looks like somebody else's trippy little something. Boy, I love the style up here. Portland's really cool, man. Like the way they gentrified this shit is just. Well, gentrified is a strong word, but the, when it switches over to, like, fucking young people and stuff, the way they did it in Portland is so cool. Like, it's not it's not like a suburban thing where they just put in a bunch of chain fucking, oh, here's your Subway sandwiches shop and all this shit. It's all just, like, young people having their little yuppie, like, shops. Could be anything. But it's so cool, you know? It's all these old houses, wood houses, you know? But they really did it cool, so they, like, created a new thing. It's like... A dream situation. But I guess uh, Rob, and the, Rob and the rest of those folks are, are down on the 5 freeway. Let me see. I guess I go up here and down again. We'll go down and play some music, I guess. Let's get this those guys must be union because they're just standing around talking. <laughs> okay, let me. I gotta be careful. These red glasses are not optimal for creepy old vampire fucking backstage tunnels. Let's see. Okay, I got my hand on the rail. This is cool. I like this couch back here. It's sort of cool. You can kick, kick back with your mates before you go on stage, you know, or something. This is cool. And this is the major problem with Oasis. You know, like they're so big, they were so big in, in the UK. But if they would have ever just taken the time to like do the tours of places like this, man, that would have been like something else, right? Instead, they were like, okay, we'll buy out half a house, we'll play a big, massive place, you know, that's like four to 8,000 people, and we'll play fucking three shows in America, and that's our tour or something, or eight shows, maybe, maximum. You know, just like a total joke. And, yeah, America tour, eight shows. Like, usually, this time, we're not doing it. Usually, when, when we tour America, we, we tour for over two months, you know, and play like... 900 or a thousand person above places for two months straight, <laughs> you know, every day. It's not even the same animal as any of those pussy, like, fucking European bands. They don't even have a concept because they're like, oh, it's 10 hours to each show. We can't do that. And, and then they bitch because they're not, like, you know, embraced. It's like, dude, the reason why this is, like, the biggest market for music in the world is because it's a big place. There's, like... A lot of fucking cities. Yeah. It's kind of weird we're not even playing too many shows. This is GPS. Well, that makes me feel better. I'll go get two from the back. Okay. This Mother's Day, get the Droid Razor by Motorola. Only ninety nine ninety nine. The lowest price ever. Verizon. Liners. But they're playing first. That's the way we- and we're playing longer. That's the way I like to think about it. But, um, you know, we're talking about doing the Blue Order New Monday song, since you asked. Uh, as 
one of those floppy disks, sort of 12 inches, but make it just a little bit different because I can't really trademark that thing. We're talking about it, but I'm not done raising hell on those guys yet because I'm kind of miffed at them for a couple reasons. The, well, the main reason is they booted fucking hoodie, hooky over money. You know? Decided not to pay him for any of that stuff that he obviously made up. It's like 90% of their fucking music is based on those weird bass lines that are minimal. So, that's true. So, for them to dick him over money now and not be cool, I can't think of anybody. He's way more important to fucking New Order than that chick, whoever the fuck she was. I don't even, I've never even bothered to learn her name. I just figured she was somebody, somebody was fucking her or something and she would be gone. But yeah, Bernard totally ripped me off, man. We should dig up that song in a minute and I'll burn it. That Bad Lieutenant song. He fucking stole up my whole hook from When Joker's Attack. And that's not a blues riff. That's like, oh, anybody could come up with it. That's a melodic 12-string part. And he just ripped that off for his single. It didn't even acknowledge me at all. Just took the whole thing outright. And I didn't even bother suing him, you know, because they were like a big, really important band to me, Joy Division, and all that stuff. But I was like so bummed. I was like, I'm going to get you back for sure. And this is going to be great from now on until the end of time. It would be different if I was some band that wasn't in every aggregator, you know, and in movies and stuff. But now for until the end of time, as long as there is digital information, you're going to type in New Order Blue Monday and you're going to get Blue Order New Monday. Same time, you know? In Google, in Last FM, in YouTube, anywhere on the planet. It's just like, welcome, we're married, welcome to the family, you fucking dipshit. And they can't stop it. It's not like they can pay fucking Google to say... Brian Jones time asker, not new order in the master computer of the algorithm or something. So he's an idiot, but I knew that when him and Johnny Marr tried to make some fucking record, they're like, yeah, we both went on antidepressants on this Prozac stuff that they got this new thing. You know, we're Northern people and we've, we've, um, we've, uh, both suffered from depression. So we decided, you know, it was time to, to like, Try this new drug out and see how it affects. They said it doesn't affect our creativity, and so we decided to make this project electronica on Prozac. I'm like, Pfft. so bad too. It's just like, Pfft. it's so funny because you know, like it's like Johnny Marr and Morrissey are so worried about tarnishing the reputation of the Smiths for whatever reason, but he has no qualms at all of making about a fucking hundred awful songs with the Cribs or any of these other bands. <laughs> He's like. Here's my band Electronica. No, I don't want to dirty the Smiths, but I'll fucking just. People are so lame, they're gonna love me for that forever. So I'll just fucking make the worst record of all time and call it Electronic. I don't know. I don't think anybody liked Electronic, else we would be. They would have a second and third album. I think it's pretty obvious. They don't even like each other else. I mean, it's self-evident with artists that can do anything. If you've got mil two millionaires getting together to make a record, I mean, if they don't make another one, there's, there's a couple reasons. One, it didn't sell, and they don't want to pay, spend any more money on their vanity project. Or number two, they don't even like each other. So let's see. Let's, let's put on some kind of music. Uh, I, I, I pull music from this folder quite a quite a bit, but I don't care. Let's just get weird.